Hello and welcome to Excellence Academy. Let's look at a third method of um, solving problems on limits of functions called the Hobbiter's Rule. All right. Method three. Our third method called the Hobbiter's Rule. Right. So let's um, let's let's deal with the concept of the Hopkins rule and see how it works. Now the Hopkins rule actually works with the idea of um, the general method of differentiation. All right. For the Hopkins rule, simply differentiate each term individually using the general method of differentiation, and then impute the given limit value. All right. For um, just to refresh your memory, we said if I'm given um, the term, let's say y equals to x over n, using general method, we said dy over dx is equal to this comes here, that's n x over n minus 1. The concept is multiply by the power and subtract 1 from the power. That's it. So if I have, let's say, x cubed, if I differentiate x cubed, this gives you the power comes here, that's 3, x into 3 minus 1 is 2. So I have this, right? This is a simple idea about general method of differentiation. In the same way, if I differentiate 2x, this will give you 2. If I differentiate x, this will give you 1, right? I'll leave a link uh, to the explanation of this in the description of this video below, right? I'll leave a link on how this is done, uh, a link to, it, to my video on how this is done in the description of this video. Right, back to this. So we said, if I'm to evaluate this, now I picked these two questions from a previous example using uh, the H method. And of course, the general method or the substitution method, right? This one, we had an answer as what? As 10 here. Why this one here? We had an answer as 27, right? If we check our previous classes on limits and on, uh, on limits, we, we did this one already. So we want to use the Hopkins rule to solve it, right? For the for Hopkins rule, is the same concept, all right? Like you, it's the same um, way of finding limits, but Difference is that for the Hopkins rule, it's like a faster method, right? Gives you a faster way of getting your answers. So we'll see how that works. So let's look at how to solve this using the Hopkins rule. What's the idea? The idea is very simple. We said bring out the given function. The function here is x squared minus 25 all over x minus 5. Differentiate each of the terms of the function. If I differentiate x squared, if I differentiate x squared, this gives you 2x because this 2 comes down here, that's 2. x, 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have 2x minus, from general method of differentiation, if you differentiate um, a constant, that's a term without a variable, it gives you 0. So it gives you 0 all over. Differentiate x, you said, if I shift x, it gives you 1. That gives you 1 minus. Here is also another constant. It has no variable attached to it. To differentiate 5, you get 0. So this will now be equal to 2x minus 0. is 2x all over 1, which is equal to 2x. At this point, put x as equal to the given limit value, which is 5. So this will now be equal to 2x, that's equal to 2x is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, which is the same answer we had in our previous um, example, or previous class. Let's look on this one here. Using the same concept of the Hopkins rule, we said for the Hopkins rule, I will differentiate each of the terms individually and then substitute the given limit value for the variable and then you have the answer. When we saw this in the previous example, we had the answer, I think that was 27. 
but let's leave, let's use log tau and see if we still have 27. Now in this case, my given function here is x cubed minus 27 all over x minus 3. If I differentiate this, differentiate x cubed, um, we did this before, you have 3x squared, that gives you 3x squared minus, here's a constant because it has no variable. Differentiate 27 gives you 0 all over, differentiate x, you get 1 minus, differentiate 3 gives you 0. So that's equal to 3 gives you 0 because 3 is a constant. It has no variable attached to it. From here, 3x squared minus 0 gives you 3x squared all over 1 minus 0 gives 1. So this will now be equal to 3x squared. So we said put x as being equal to the given limit value here, which is what? 3. So hence, I'll have that 3x squared is equal to 3 into x is 3 becomes 3 squared that's equal to 3 into 3 squared gives 9 3 times 9 is 27 which is the same answer we have when we use and that was the H method all right so this is just a simple concept about the Hopter's rule for the Hopter's rule we said um, differentiate the terms individually using the general method and then substitute the value of x as the given limit value okay as the given limit value and then you get your answer so it's a very fast and short method of evaluating limits of um, a function so this is how we solve this using the optas rule